What's up everybody? Um, this past year has been pretty crazy for our family. Uh, we've told you about our new house. Um, we've, been, we've told you about how we've been busier this year than we've been in a very long time. Um, and basically, what was once normal in our life is no longer normal. So today, I want to talk to you about a new normal. If uh, you're in the Houston area, you gotta hit up Corkscrew Barbecue. It's the best barbecue that I've had in Houston. All right, so I'm done here at the office for today. It's 2.20, I gotta go get in car rider line and get kids from school. Um, but I've been thinking about all the changes that have happened in our family the past few months, and it's led me to thinking about all the changes that are happening in the world. It seems like the world is, it's, a, it's abnormal. Normal is always changing. What was normal yesterday is no longer normal today. What was cool for kids last year is no longer cool for kids this year. Just the world changes so quickly. And so as a believer, I model my life um, after the principles in the Bible. And when I read the Bible, I see that there was crazy times back then. I mean, look at the writings of Paul. Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus uh, because there was sexual misconduct that happened in the temple. I mean, just crazy stuff. Uh, First and second Corinthians, Paul wrote, um, about uh, sexual immorality. I mean, it's just, there's crazy perversion, all kinds, the same craziness that we face today, they also faced in one way or another in the New Testament. And that led me to thinking that if the early church could prosper, or let me say it like this, not the early church, let's make it personal. If believers in the New Testament could thrive and live a life that was pleasing unto the Lord in all that was going on in their culture, that means that we can also live a life that's countercultural. I believe that the Word of God was written in times like that for times like this. Craziness 2,000 years ago for craziness today to show us that if they could do it, we could do it too. I'm now sitting in the car rider line. Um, I said all that earlier to say this, that we don't, as believers, have to live a life with our head in the sand. We don't have to, we don't have to uh, just bury our head and quit reaching the world in need. I think the darker that culture gets, the crazier that the world gets, the more normal changes. I think the more proactive the church needs to be in reaching the hurting and the lost and the afflicted. Philippians chapter two says, do everything without grumbling and complaining. Then you will shine like stars 
in the sky. So I think that it's easy as it's easy for believers today to grumble and to complain about the way the world is. But I think that when we grumble and complain and moan, we are losing ground to what um, the Lord wants us to do. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, when it's dark enough, you can see the stars. It's our desire to cast the light of Jesus Christ in a dark and chaotic world. No matter what's going on around us, no matter how bad things get, it's, it's not our job to tell everybody how bad it is. It's our job to tell everybody how good that Jesus is. You don't have to run around thumping your Bible, even though I've been known to thump my Bible. Um, here's three things that you can do to help you shine your light bright in the crazy world that we're living in. Number one, three things to help your light shine bright. Remain positive in the midst of negativity. Maybe at your school, maybe on your job, maybe in your finances, no matter where negativity might pop up in your world, remain positive. Number two, stand strong and joyful through the adversities of life. We all have struggles, we all have problems, but remaining joyful in those seasons allows us to shine our light so brightly that people will want what we have inside of us. You know, I've heard it said like this, and it rings so true, that someone is praying for the problem that you're fussing over or you're complaining about. It can always be worse. Someone has it so bad right now that they are wishing that they had your struggles instead of their own. So it's important that we stand strong and joyful in adversity. And the last one is keep a thankful heart. Keep a thankful heart. A heart of gratitude and thanksgiving will do us so well. No matter what we're facing, we always can find something to be thankful for. You can always be thankful. Hey, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, why don't you give it a thumbs up? If you're not subscribed to us, why don't you subscribe? We would greatly, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, and we just have, uh, we just hope you have a great day. God bless. Bye bye.